Uh, uh, what a job today. Oh my god. Hey, you two. Oh. Finish what? cleaning up the room. Oh. Then we start. Okay, oh. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Welcome everybody for today's little clip on the SL series from my side, Fia, and from Matthias' side. Hello everybody. Today we'd like to take you a step further in the SL series, in the technology, the feature set, what the systems, what the series is about. As a little recap, four years ago we started with the SL series, the GSL, the Grosse Special Loudsprecher and continue to take the family, the features, the applications. The next step, a year later, into the KSL, the Kleine Special Loudspeaker, and the install by Ryan KSL-I. As we always said, we'd like to do a family. A family consists of a feature set, performance sets, and some specialties and technologies that we are using and applying for the entire series. So today, we would like to take you to the next step to finish the trilogy of the SL series and go to the extra kleine, the extra small XSL system. So um, let's recap on the features of the SL series and let's start with the main feature, which is the full broadband directivity that we can achieve with a SL series. So what is the motivation for that? Why are we so keen on the full broadband directivity? First of all, um, there are of course large indoor arenas where we have the problem of diffuse field excitation. You know, you all know more and more shows are in the round where, especially where rearward emissions mess up with the direct sound that's intended for a certain seating area. Another point is with the outdoor uh, noise emission problem. Imagine an uh, outdoor open air festival or open air situation. Some people come to the show paying a lot of money to uh, enjoy the art that's being performed there, while for other people nearby in the resident areas, it's some horrible noise. So it's another good reason to address this issue. More art, less, less noise. noise. Exactly. So how to achieve that? Especially the problem is the low and low mid-frequency range. That's where we are losing directivity in the conventional systems. So that's the point, that's the area, the frequency range that needs to be addressed. And how to do that uh, in the basic principle? How does this work, basically? Um, imagine we are having two sources. Um, they need to be spaced apart in a certain distance, which corresponds to one quarter of the wavelength. And additionally, they have to be delayed well, with a time delay, which represents one quarter of the cycle time. And now, imagine a situation like this. Let's start with the rearward source starts to emit first and then at the right moment the front source joins so that the two waves combine coherently and they add up or sum at the listener's ear. From the rear side of this arrangement, it's a similar situation. The rearward source starts to emit. The second source, the one from the front, joins with an exact opposite polarity, so exactly out of phase, so the two waves cancel each other and the effect is a dramatic reduction of level at the listener's ear. Easy for a sine wave. Well, this example was for one individual frequency. Of course, the task is to maintain this principle for two octaves approximately. That's the frequency range of the low frequency system. And that's the frequency range that needs to be addressed. So how to do that from a, from a cabinet point of view and how to engineer this? First of all, let's have a look at the higher octave of the two, where the low frequency system of a line array roughly works. We have two base reflex systems, one in the front, which is indicated by the yellow part, and one on the rear side, which is indicated by the green parts. And now a property of a base reflex system is that all the higher frequencies, clearly above the cabinet tuning, they are emitted through the cones only, and not through any ports or something. So, there is a certain spacing needed, which, including the reflection around the box, uh, needs to correspond approximately this quarter wavelength. And then for the lower frequencies, 
um, the property of the base reflex system again, the lower frequencies, they are only emitted through the ports and the cone is emitting nothing. And so we see we have a larger spacing here and this larger spacing together with the refraction around the box taking a large arc maintains this quarter wavelength offset condition in order to achieve this attenuation to the rear side and the summation towards the front. And of course the additional thing, the time delay processing needs to be a frequency dependent time delay which is, well, nothing special that can be realized even by a very simple all-pass filtering. So the result of all this, we can maintain for the entire frequency range a summation towards the front, full coherency towards the front and a dramatic reduction towards the rear side. Of course, this principle seemed attractive enough to apply for patents, and we have done so. Well, in the meantime, they are getting granted. The first one that we actually received was the one from China, so that's why we have it here. And this is what we call in our technologies, we're applying cardio technologies to enable full broadband directivity control. So where does this lead us to? Look at this beauty. Look at the isobars some useful directivity from the highest towards the lowest frequencies, no dramatic widening up there, and so we have the, the dispersion completely under control. Actually, in this range, this dispersion fits with the uh, adjective subwoofers. So, let's welcome the XSL systems, and let's have a deeper look into the feature set and what we are, is a must-have on that systems. Apart from the broadband directivity, we just went through, and this was a hard task to achieve that. What else do we have? Well, of course, we have the enhanced low-frequency headroom that needs to be adapted here. We have the dual rigging modes, so the, no, the standard tension rigging mode and the new compression mode, while at the same time we are offering a larger splay range, um, up to 14 degrees for this system. We are having two horizontal dispersion options, so the uh, SL series, typical 80 degrees and 120 degrees. And the system, of course, as an SL series member, it's two-way active. We have a new amplifier as the reference. And of course, we want to offer a cabinet link option here so that uh, in conventional processed mode, not array processed mode, uh, we have the option to link two cabinets to one channel pair of an amplifier. And of course, we want to offer array processing. It's basically a standard for the system, and we have a weight limit. Yeah. Oops. Some do. Yeah. Um, well, the weight limit was 40 kilograms. Actually, yeah. we achieved it pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, apart from the stuff that we just mentioned, the whole packaging, transport, the logistics is a typical SL series. Of course, we should not forget at that place that there will be an XSL-specific subwoofer by, uh, basically, we are looking for that the mid of next year, but this, in that case, will be to finalize the entire XSL systems. Not to forget, last but not least, the XSLI, the install-specific versions, options of these whole systems, which is, of course, we come to that later, where we see the most application fields for the systems in the future. Integrating all these features all these technologies into one system, in this case the XSL system, is what we actually call, it's more SL, nothing less. Okay, scaling down uh, the, all the, S, the SL principle and all these features into a smaller system, this means there is especially one task that's really a tough one. So the toughest one was to maintain the directivity and the coherency towards the front at the same time for a smaller system. In the end, we managed to do this, and this can be expressed in our coherency plots that we introduced with the SL series. What do they express? These lines express the loss in level towards the front that we get from an arrangement of low frequency systems like this, together with their appropriate processing. And in respect to a situation where this low frequency, the sidewards firing low frequency system would be mounted next to the other one on the front baffle. So what do we see? We are actually losing no level within the operating bandwidth 
in the lower frequency ranges where we are for the smaller system where we are losing a little bit of coherency towards the front um, that's out of the system's bandwidth so finally because this one because this coherency plot looks like this that's the reason why we actually did the XSL why we scaled that down towards a smaller dimension in the SL series context, we are not talking about total efficiency of the systems. We looked at the physical design, the electroacoustical design, the coherency, the coherencies of the systems. What else is there to make this whole package very efficient? Well, of course, um, from a loudspeaker system point of view, there is this um, cardioid principle with, which is not sacrificing any level towards the front. That's only, well, that's a major part of the story, but not all. Of course, this principle, or this principle has another advantage. It increases the efficiency of the entire system because the front-facing loudspeaker sees a different acoustical environment, which increases its sensitivity. Additionally, we have applied um, basic principles in loudspeaker design that increase efficiency again. So overall, um, when, we, when it comes to system efficiency, um, and system efficiency including the amplifier, if we compare the actual power draw of a SL series system with an older school system, with the, as an example, with a J series, we can make interesting measurements. We have an example where we applied EIA 426 noise to a pair of J8, a pair of GSL8, and a pair of KSL8 in a lab measurement. Set the same SPL and the same frequency response at the measurement position and measured the mains power draw to into the amplifier. And interestingly, we can get to a situation where we can reduce the mains power draw of the KSL system to approximately half of the mains power draw of a J-series system. So that's overall system efficiency. And that's the point where we can benefit now. Because what does this mean? Suddenly the requirements to power amplifiers or for power amplifier design they are changing. What do we need in the end? We need a high output voltage. We only need a medium output power because to achieve the same SPL, we don't need it anymore. And then on the other hand, we are needing um, an enhanced limiter structure to control such a behavior precisely. And that's where a new amplifier comes into the game, um, an amplifier with a high output voltage leading to a higher system efficiency which means less power demand on the input side, on the mains power draw. It gives a full performance within a well lower budget amplification. Um, it gives an advanced voltage management. It has some sufficient DSP capabilities for future system architecture for enhancement in the future. We have several things in the drawer. And in the end, the whole thing gets a little bit more environmentally friendly. And of course, the T40 or 40T amplifier for the install case is part of that complete XSL package. So let's have a look at the cabinet internals of the XSL top. Well, first of all, to mention the whole XSL is a plastics cabinet. It's made from uh, ABS PC. It's a polycarbonate, basically. Why did we do this? There is the main reason for this, because we could realize a detail level, including a surface structure, which would not be possible to make that from wood in that size of cabinet. Another big point, another big advantage here is that we have the possibility for structural optimization. This structural optimization refers to both the static things, well, static forces that need to be taken from the cabinet and which are introduced through the rigging system. And of course, the other thing is of equal importance is the dynamic behavior, the dynamic structural rigidity of the box when it's playing music, when the loudspeakers are working, the important thing is that there is no vibration. And another big topic of this plastic cabinet, it's a full dyed black thing. So once the surface gets hurt or damaged, uh, it's not a big problem. There is nothing, well, white or light color shining through. And it's super easy to repair that with a standard black paint. And there is no need for additional surface protection. The whole thing is plastic. So if, if it's getting in contact with water, nothing happens. Okay. Why don't you have a look at it? Let's have a look at it. <laughs> so the XSL cabinet, um, the loudspeakers, we have two 8-inch low-frequency drivers on the front. We have two 
six and a half inch low frequency drivers on the side. We have a six and a half inch mid-range driver horn loaded. The mid-range exit are these two slots here. There is the centrally mounted high frequency waveguide which is loaded by two one inch exit drivers, two inch diaphragms, one inch exit. There is a well-known three-point rigging system, the two strands on the front and the single one on the rear with holes for uh, pinning the tension and compression mode. Furthermore, there is the opening to mount and access the mid-range driver. As you can see, the very nice Y-shaped SL series handle is missing because it just wouldn't do any sense. You have to connect the cabinet, it's much more important. That's why you have those handles here in the back for building up in tension mode especially. Good, cabinet, as we said, that nice materials that we were looking for, 70 centimeters wide, 39 kilogram, not heavy. <laughs> How do you call it, not, not heavy? Not too shabby. Not too, not too shabby. A very, very incredible package of the entire systems and once you listen to it, you're going to be surprised. We're having the mobile versions, the install versions, and we have actually two ways to fly rig mount systems. The one we called the very compact mounting frames, which work mobile as well as install, and the SL typical flying frames, which includes the compression set and everything else. I would say let's have a closer look to it. Mm -hmm. As shortly described for her, we have two different ways of flying either the mobile or the install XSL system. As we actually expect that the XSL is flown in, in smaller configurations up to 12 most of the times we thought about a different very compact uh, flying system which we call the mounting frame. This is the one on top here. It takes a load of 12 tops and it has detent on the top and it fits the road, our rotor clamp for a single point rigging perfectly. Yeah, the mobile version comes with a mounted array side and uh, the way you fly this is in tension mode only from a mounting frame, the XSL mounting frame. With a subwoofer that will be adaptive frames, a subwoofer on top, a mounting frame for a subwoofer so we get a completely array equivalent to the weight of 12 XSL top cabinets. This is available, as I said, for install and for mobile use. The second uh, flying version is basically the SL series flying from the flying frames. Well, it's basically right the same uh, as in the entire SL series. Um, there is a frame which goes on top of the cabinets which can travel with them and there is an additional load beam which has two options to mount towards the front and towards the rear side for extended up and down tilt options. Compression? Awesome. Of course, it, um, comes, it also offers the compression mode rigging. There will be an additional compression frame for this system. There will be a, a compression set, so the, uh, the lever hoist for the rear side uh, to compress the back of the, of the cabinets. This is the XSL transport card with a footprint of 80 by 80. You can deploy them either in tension mode or in compression mode straight. The card caters for both situations. All the boxes are pinned and locked. Yeah, because it's not very high and you want to have the extra truck package, you can deploy this pillows here and these pillows take an additional transport lid which we can either be deployed on the upper positions where you can leave the mounting frame or the flying frame on or there's a second mounting positions without the frames mounted and this helps you for storaging or for packaging other stuff in the truck. An integral part of the whole SL series system package were the D80 amplification racks. We have a new amplifier, so there's of course a need to have that packaging also available for the D40 amplifier. And let's have a, let's look, have at a look at it. D40 amplifier rack, but looks pretty familiar. 
some of you will know. What do we have here? We have the power distribution. It comes in a 32 ampere second. There's a second version with the NEMA connections to it. We have the loudspeaker outputs on the LKA 25s, individual NL8 outputs, six amplifiers, and some more extra connections and a special part that Matthias takes you. Well, the extra connectors, the extra part is the connector panel, which now includes the additional digital ins, which are present all the time and not alternatively to some analog ones. And we have a network switch built in there. It's an 11 port switch. It will provide two PoE outlets uh, for array sites and stuff. Eight ports on the rear side, six of them are pre-wired to the um, amplifiers. In a first version, it will be a standard Ethernet star wired via the switch for the OCA remote control network. In a second version, we will enable the Milan audio network in the D40s via a firmware update. For the single switch, this will mean that we will have OCA and the Milan network, the primary network, without the redundancy. And then there will be an upgrade kit towards full redundancy. It's a second switch with all the cabling, which will offer then a full redundancy for both the OCA and the Milan audio network. Of course, the whole package is also available with three amplifiers, basically the same topology, mains, outlet, three amplifiers, and the DN1 switch, D40, Turing Egg, part of the SL series package. So, okay, a lot of things said. I hope we could take you into the family affair of the SL series to close the trilogy with the last, the XSL, the smallest systems, with the complete feature set of the SL series. Main important point, we have the install versions of the XSL, we have the mobile version, not to forget the special versions, the, our customization department for special installs for special Stadia or cruise ship projects, which we, is in the heart of the DNA of the SL series of the XSL and the KSLI systems, so to say. Last but not least, not forgetting to mention the XSL subwoofers, that we will be part of the XSL systems, a flyable subwoofer, which flies on top of the arrays to be actively driven. And it's going to be a very nice system also, uh, but this is still in development. Talking about development timelines, we currently uh, start shipping the XSLI, the installed versions of the systems in October 21, followed by the availability of the mobile XSL top cabinets in January 22, with all the rigging, with all the transport, the carts, the whole package. The subwoofer will be there around in June 22 to supplement and complete the complete XSL system. Good. So much from our side. We hope you enjoyed our little presentation and got the idea of the trilogy. More SL, nothing less. And only one thing left, I think, is... Well, thank you for watching and listening. And don't forget to clean up your room. Which is the acoustical thing.